So any bids below that, I don't want them. What's the top end of a technical score that I want? Because above that, I'm paying for stuff I don't need. What's my maximum price? And what's a price below which the whole thing becomes unsustainable? Okay. And then, having plotted all of that, I plot a graph line which runs from corner to corner. Okay. Any bidders that are below this, I definitely don't want. <laughs> Any bidders that are outside of this square, I definitely don't want. And effectively what I'm trying to do is find the one that's somewhere in that triangle closest to the top left corner. Not closest to the line. Not necessarily closest to the line, so closest to the top left corner. Top, okay. Basically. One, one, one way which is apart from difficulty of setting the lines, which is a problem. Yeah. A maximum technical score seems to be a little bit. Um, well, I, right, okay, so, so, so. so. Because the, and the point that I'm making is if they are very, very efficient and give a very high technical score at a price yeah. they can afford, then it will be obtuse to say, you know, thank you. That's potentially true. And this is where drawing the graph becomes difficult because actually. What we're doing here is very simplistically trying to explain something yeah. that is, and then, and then in practice, delivered exactly. through a, um, a, a, a formula. Yeah, and, and the problem it caused was that the, it was painted a picture that, that obviously that looks great, I think, oh, brilliant, we can target people, but the fact we're not prepared to give a lower end price or with some of the parameters, it makes, yeah. it, makes it not work. Now, in the SNITs, we don't present it like this, we present it as a table, and we present it as a coppice figure, cost of a percent increase in score. And effectively what, what that's saying, if that was 50, you know, for, for want of, if that score is 51 and 52, so that's a, that's a difference of one, what is that price? And, you know, it's, it's different in different regions, but it generally comes out at a number somewhere in the yeah. handfuls of million. But it's setting that incline, isn't it? And what it's, it's doing it's is trying that to get it. is setting yeah. that incline. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And this is where the should cost becomes really important. Yeah, because that's your. So gauge, the other challenge of this yeah. is when everybody says, well, are you doing a 50 50 or a 60 40 or a whatever? Well, actually, that depends on the grading of your graph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what we've, because we haven't quite done it, like we've modelled it in all sorts of different ways to come up with the number. Where we are actually something in um, the built estate is something like 60 40. Um, actually, I think it's probably more like 62%, 38%, or something like that mathematically. But, but it it's, enables people from a relative, yeah. the older model to understand. Yeah. What's been really, really important is that in the old days, you, we used to do the relative scoring methods where you'd take whichever was your winning supplier and, and you know, Everyone else's mark depended on what the winner had got or, or whatever. The absolute method allows everybody to plot with absolute certainty where they stand on a model without reference to any other bidder. So that's the way defence economics wants us to go in the future with, with these things. So that's willingness. There is an idiot guy. Thanks for that, Ed.